Is that Paul? Speaking. Hello, Paul. It's it's Scott from the radio in Lanzarote. Hi, Scott. You all right? Yeah, great, great stuff. Um, glad you picked up the phone as well. Uh, we are live and local. And first off, on a personal basis, I've got to say what an absolutely unbelievable read your debut book was. Absolutely inspirational stuff. And I've got to say big thank you for that. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for that, mate. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it took a long time to write it, but we, we got there in the end. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say, um, how did the actual book come come around, Paul? Well, I don't know how much I can say on the radio, which is, uh, but I uh, I stalked my abusers with a gun for a few days, and the book came around as, uh, obviously I didn't kill anyone or do anything in the end, it's a long story, no. but the book came about as a as a positive revenge as opposed to me ending up dead or in prison like everybody else. And because of the personal training and everything, and I trained quite a lot of wealthy clients, we used to go to dinner, sort of go to dinner parties, and I'm sitting there telling my stories, and people would sit there with their mouths open, and people, everyone would say, you need to write this down, you need to write this down. So uh, eventually I did, but um, I was illiterate to I was 25, so I, I had to use a ghostwriter to help me. The second book's yeah. out now as well, that came out in July, Beating the Odds, that's really doing well. That's the like, sort of last four or five years. I was, going to say, I was going to mention that as well, Paul. Um, obviously, the success of the first book, and you've got another book out now. Um, where, where can people actually get this book? Is this available on Kindle and yeah, Amazon? Yeah, and both books are available. Against All Odds is the original bestseller, which is, uh, and the second one is just come out on Amazon uh, in, on the Kindle, and it's also available at Waterstones and W. H. Smiths, and you know, always online and you know everywhere really. And it's. Uh, so they're, you know, they're really doing well. The second book's lot, and, and it's not um, as depressing. <laughs> it's a lot more. Up. Um, <laughs> although this, the first book is obviously a lot quite shocking. The second book's more about how I, a lot of the stuff I do now. I did a speech in the House of Lords last summer, raising lots of money for kids' charities and literary charities. And it's more about my work as a trainer, rehab specialist, and things like that. But it also still talks about the past and how it, how everything relates, you know, and to today. Well, I was going to touch on that uh, in a little bit, but I, I wanted to talk firstly about, about the first book, just just for the listeners sure. out there. I mean, basically your, your story was uh, you was you was pretty much thrown out with the rugby and then after um, uh, the nuns who, who unfortunately couldn't adopt you, you then ended up at St. Leonard's. Yeah. Uh, and then later found out that most of the uh, kids in the dormitory that you'd actually grew up with had actually died as well. I mean, yeah. absolutely h- horrific story. And how on earth you managed to turn your life around? I mean, there have been so many turning points in your life, Paul, but what would you say has been the biggest turning point? Well, there are a few, obviously. There's more than one. I mean, I was, I was up on... Uh, when I was growing up in care, I had a house mother, I can't mention her name for legal reasons, who used to abuse me verbally a lot every day, saying you're... You know, you're a low-life Irish, you know, prison fodder. Mm-hmm. If you were normal, you wouldn't be in this children's home. If had a life, you know, if anybody loved you, you, you wouldn't be here. And she used to abuse me mentally every day, which really stayed with. That's actually quite that's worse than the beatings, to be quite honest with you. Mm-hmm. But she, yeah. um, she used to say, you know, you're going to prison, you're going to prison. And I was a dormer for many years, and I ended up on a two lots of GBH charge where I was attacked by five men. So I was in Crown Court for. Uh, in my early 30s, I was in Crown Court for a week looking at, you know, quite a long prison sentence. But the jury came back with self-defence and reasonable force. And obviously, when I was waiting for the jury to come back, that was quite a typical point because I could just hear this woman's voice in my head saying, you know, you're worthless. You, you just, you, you know, you're just going to go to prison like like everybody else, you know. Mm. And, uh, you know, that was a massive revelation for me to be found not guilty and and, and just self-defence and reasonable force. I was, she'd never have been there. I was attacked by five men, and unfortunately a couple of them come unstuck. But, you know, that was a massive yeah. changing point. But also, there's, there's been many. There's been many. I felt, when I fell off the roof and severed my arm off, ending my boxing career, I took two years to rehab my own body, and I took nearly five years to learn to read and write. So, again, that, that changed my career for the better because that's how I ended up training lots of celebrities and, and you know, travelling the world and... You know, I wouldn't. I didn't know if I would have made it as a boxer anyway. You know, so because I was a yeah. bit weight. So there, there has been many. Um, I did. I have had this sort of blind optimism, no matter where I was or how bad things were. I always seems, 
used to think, well, you know, things are always going to get better. Well, they, cer- they certainly did get better, and I, I notice you still can't mention the person's name for legal reasons, and that was actually going to be one of my questions that, obviously, since I read the book, has justice been actually done? And, and judging by um, you not being able to mention the name, I take it that uh, she's still walking the streets. Yeah, no, yeah, it's very hard to... to, um, to to convict anyone, Scott, of mental abuse, isn't it? It's something that's very hard. Mm. You know, in physical beatings and and sexual abuse, which was rife in the children's home I grew up in, was, you know, and a lot of those were, you know, a lot of those people got away with it and still got away with it. Some, my house yeah. father got 14 years, but there was vital lost evidence for somebody uh, I can mention, Alan Prescott and Hayden Davis, because they're convicted paedophiles. They yeah. they yep. basically got away with uh, very short sentences because vital video evidence had gone missing and uh, the fact that he was a GP and a local councillor and a well-connected politician would make you sort of question how that can go. Yeah. But it did, and that was when I got quite angry and, and I went after him myself. But hopefully... Right, well, I think I think any, any person would. I mean, obviously you're never going to forget what happened at St. Leonard's, but is it possible to forgive these people? I, I, you know, I've been asked that a few times, Scott, and I only think you can forgive somebody who's truly sorry for what they've done and, and truly yeah. sees the harm. And, and I, you can't. I don't think you can forgive somebody who doesn't really repent or doesn't really realise that. You know, in my dormitory, growing up, out of eight boys, six of them committed suicide. You know, and, mm. and this was a direct result of being mentally, sexually, and physically abused. By these yeah, people, yeah. you know, so if these, if these people can't, you know, they don't feel they've done anything wrong. How can you forgive somebody? You know, I don't. Yeah. It doesn't follow me every day. It doesn't ruin my life. It, but it's, I find it very hard to forgive people like that. To be quite honest with you. Yeah, I think that's an absolutely fantastic answer and the right answer as well. I mean, obviously, since then, you you did turn your life around. I mean, and and you've worked with the likes of Al McPherson on a video, Chris Reeves, of course, Paulie Yates on The Big Breakfast. I mean, how did you find it suddenly working with all these all these celebrities? And you carry on working with them as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, what a turnaround. It's strange. It's really strange because at one point where I was still a doorman and still m- moving around with, you know, the, the darker circles in life and then I was jumping on a plane and flying out to train you know a supermodel or something and it was I'm still pinch myself now I wake up in a you know I live in Stockbroker Belt I wake up and and I look out the window and I've got two boys and I live in a I live in paradise compared to where I've come from you know it's uh uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I was going to say, obviously, I've read the book, and I know what a, a massive change this was when you when you fell in love uh, and uh, become a father yourself as well. And and of course, not really having a father figure in your life apart from the guys at the box club. I mean, that must have all come come as well alien to you. I, I guess in a little way. Yeah, it has actually. My people do say that. My ten-year-old is he's more like my friend than my son. He, he gives it back to me as much as I give it to him. I mean, it's 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 very hard to be a father if you don't know what a father's supposed to do, and you make mistakes. But unfortunately, my wife is a very strong woman, and she's somebody who she says she's got three boys. She she puts me in my place as well. So it's, <laughs> um, it's very hard. It's very hard. But at the same time, I think if you love somebody and you care for them and you just want to do the best for them. And you, and you understand that they need guidelines and you can't allow them to just do what they want because there's a really funny story, I don't know if we've got time, where I I was, I was we were starved as kids in the children's home so we were always hungry. they just give us the bare minimum they stole the budgets for our food. So we were always starving hungry. And I've got this thing about food now and I'm really, you know, it's something that really is quite emotional to me. And my, my boy, my eldest, I just let, I just let them go into the cupboards and eat what they want. And, you know, of course they were eating all the wrong things and not eating proper food and all that. And my wife said to me, you've got to get over this thing, over food. He needs to eat proper meals. Because I couldn't say to him, no, you can't open that fridge. No, you can't go in that cupboard. I couldn't refuse him food. And it's just things like that that are not, they're not quite normal, but... You know, I'm, Brilliant. you have to learn <laughs> that, you know, their life is not my life. They're not starving. They're just taking liberties, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well it is a brilliant story and unfortunately we are running out of time it'd be lovely if you can join me again on the radio Paul because I'd love to chat chat more to you if that's, if that's to, okay yeah. more than happy to and so yes you, so you, your new book is out it's called Beating the Odds uh, and it's available on Kindle Amazon 
Yeah, WH Smith and Waterstone online, and it's actually in WH Smith shops as well. Yeah, so. Brilliant. Thanks, Scott. Brilliant. Well, I've got to say, I mean, I know you're not one that looks too far into the future, but I know you've got a few things going, and I know you've recently done things with Boris Johnson, and it's it's just been so lovely to talk to you. Um, I've got to say, have a great weekend, and hopefully we can talk again uh, maybe in the next few weeks, because it's an absolutely amazing story. That'd be great. I'd be, that, thanks, for, thanks for the chat, Scott. It's brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, lovely, Paul. I sh- and I shall email you later as well. All the best. <laughs> thanks, Scott. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers then, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.